This week's quilt will entail using some more scraps. What we're going to do first off is make nine blocks that are similar. What you need to do this is you need three sets of two and a half, four and a half inch strips that are sewn together. You need two strips of two and a half by eight and a half that are sewn together and two strips that are two and a half by 12 and a half sewn together. Once you do that, then we will be forming the block like this. And then what I'm doing is with one of these two and a half, four and a half blocks, the light is facing the dark side and horizontally. And then I have two that are going to be vertically. Part of this is a design element because this will be forming a secondary pattern when it's all put together. And also it's to minimize seams. So what I will do is I will join this unit, this unit, and this unit together, and then add those to this one and then to this. So I will get that done and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have these three joined together. And now what I'm going to do is sew this, join these two and then add this. I did explain it wrong in the previous one. I actually want the light to be where the seam is. So the darker part will be facing on the outside. And then on the top piece, the dark will be facing on the inside. This all makes sense once the pattern all comes together. So in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make nine of these blocks and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, next up we need to make up some sets. So these are, are darker and lighter, uh, two and a half, four and a half that have been sewn together. So we're gonna take 14 of those and then we're going to pair them together in sets. So as an example, I will take these two making sure the darker are on the left hand side, the lighter is on the right hand side. Then I will piece them together here with a quarter inch seam. So like that, like that. And then we'll need seven of those. So let me go ahead and do that. And then we are very close to doing the final assembly. Next up, we need some filler blocks. So what we have here are some of the dark and light strips on together. So these are going to be uh, two and a half inch wide of each by eight and a half. These are two and a half by four and a half sewn together. And these are single strips that are two and a half by four and a half. So next I'll take you over to the board and see how we start assembling this jigsaw of pieces. Okay, the next part is actually doing the final assembly. So you notice that these are the blocks that we sewed together and there are nine of them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be adding extra pieces to create diagonal rows. And that's what the final quilt will look like. Because of the assembly, I think it's going to be easier to do the top like this in pieces. And then uh, once it's quilted, then we'll square off the whole quilt to the finished size of approximately 45 by 45. So stick with me while I put together all the different pieces and create this final layout. So the first part of the assembly of this row is joining one of these blocks that we created with a two and a half by eight and a half of the mid-tone strip. And we will piece it along the bottom. And then from there, I will take another of the blocks and join it to the top up there. So let me do that and I will be right back. So this is how it's coming along here. I've got the two strips sewn together. And then on the bottom, there's this extra piece here. So to this now, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the longest strip we'll be doing. 
So the next we'll be adding another one of these blocks to the top. If you find that you may get mixed up, this is when uh, painter's tape with the row and the block number are very helpful. I'm going to just do this strip by strip so I think I can keep it straight. So I will join here and be right back. And to complete this row, I'm going to join a four and a half by eight and a half inch strip set with two blocks with the dark both on the left hand side. So I'll be piecing them together here with a quarter inch seam and then joining that to the top of the three blocks that I've already sewn together. Okay, so for row two, you're going to have the eight and a half by four and a half strips on the bottom joined to one of our standard blocks and then to that you're going to add another block of the full block and then to the very top of that you're going to make a hybrid block where you're going to have two of the uh, potato chip blocks joined with the strip set it looks like it's odd here but when it gets joined in the quilt it's actually going to go like this and then it's going to get trimmed like that and I'm just adding these extra wings as I'd like to call them just to make sure we have enough fabric when we do the final trimming so I'm going to join those join the uh, blocks together and then I'll be right back to show you column three here's a tip for you when you're joining longer pieces together sometimes it gets weighted and it wants to go side to side so what i do is on the sides i actually use these larger paper clips they're non-serrated so they're smooth edge which i use for some applique that i've been learning to do but if you pop one on each side it holds it together i find that if you use clips sometimes they add extra weight and then somebody had recommended using these hair clips, which I use for holding blocks together when I am laying it out. But I find if you use them when you're basting, sometimes these bits can catch on the fabric and it ends up pulling. And then you end up with a lot of distortion or extra thread. So I'd be interested to know what tools you use or if you've tried the paper, paper clips as well. That's kind of a tongue twister trying to say that. Anyway, I've got one more seam and then column two is done. Okay, so here is column or what I'm also calling row two is done. So we have this on the bottom, a complete larger block, another larger block here, and then this funny wedge that will get trimmed like this eventually. So on to column three. So here we go, column three, also known as row three. We have the bottom strip set at the bottom, one of our standard blocks that goes all the way to here. And then we have this hybrid block at the top. And again, don't worry because once it's all together, it will end up being get squared off like this. So on to number four. So here's column four. So we have one of our strip sets. We have our hybrid blocks here, two again, and then one of the two and a half, four and a half in one of the jelly roll colors. If you wanted to, you could add another one here, but I don't think it's necessary because this is going to end up being trimmed along like this when the final quilt is assembled. So let me sew that together and then we will be going on to column number five. So on to column five, this will actually be the lower right hand corner of the quilt. So we're going to be doing an angular block again, but I'll show you what we're sewing together. So we have again a four and a half, four and a half strip set. We have an eight and a half by four and a half other strip set. We have a 12 and a half by four and a half strip set. 
We have the potato chip blocks, two of them that are set uh, sewn together. And then beside that, we're actually going to be putting one of the backgrounds and it's actually going to be going here. So those will be sewn like that, then like this, and then I'll move this up. And then this actually like this. See, I even get confused. And then from this way. So I don't think you can see that all in the picture, but there are five different units that we'll be sewing together to make up this and I'll show you once it's all done. So for column six, working from the bottom, we're going to have these joined like that. And then to the top of that, we will have one of our standard blocks. So those will go like this. And then for the top of those will be another hybrid block where we have our potato chip set on top uh, or beside a longer strip set. And then that will go to the top of our standard block here. So I'll show you when it's all done. So here is column six stitched together. Again, it's one of the hybrid looking ones. So this bottom angular block, one of our standard blocks, and then another angular block. And when this goes up on, gets joined to the rest, it'll be going like this. So that is number six. We have number seven to do, and then they can all be joined together. Okay, so here's the last column. So again, we're going to have a funny angular in the bottom. It looks like that. And then one of our regular blocks and another regular block pieced here. There. And then for the very top, we'll have another angular block where we have the two of the potato chip and then a longer piece of the strip set. This one is the two and a half strips sewn together, making 12 and a half. So that will be a staggered block like that. So let me join them together and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's the last column we needed to assemble and this is number seven. So I'll just scroll down and show you what it looks like. I do have to say that a lot of this fabric is collected through a fabric swap, a potato chip swap, and then others are gifted to me from my friends and from my quilting buddies at a guild. And I realize when I'm sewing it together that some people have heavily starched and some people haven't at all. Some, their two and a half measurement is not two and a half. So that adds an extra level of fun and challenges to it, but I'm making it work out. So this one again will be on the angle and this one is going to actually go up against number one. So what I did is I had number one in the center. So one is here, number seven's here, six, five, and then one, two, three, four. So I will now get to join these together and show you what they look like. Okay, so here are all the columns laid out. I just have a few seams and then it's all done. So if you notice how the zigzag comes together and that'll all get squared off once it's quilted, I am hesitant to do it before that just because when you quilt, you take up a lot of extra fabric. So I'm going to join these. So I'll take one last picture and then if you're interested in the pattern, let me know. Um, send me an email to sewwithdebi at gmail.com and indicate it's for episode 44, the zigzag wave pattern, and I'll be happy to send it to you. So for joining four and three, 
uh, four is in the upper left hand corner what we want to do is we want to make sure these columns are lined up so it'll be like this like that and uh, I'll get that done and then I'll add number two to it and here's column two and column three column four is over there so these will be lined up at the first seam here and carried on down and here is column two joining with column one which is our center block and we're going to be lining this up with this first block in the potato chip group and then this seam here in the strips will be near the top Just showing you column six and five. I'm working from the lower right hand corner towards the center. And this is a critical seam that you wanna match up. These two and these will be even here. And this will end up in the lower right hand corner. Okay, here's the last two columns that we're joining together. And then we will take the two halves and join them together. So this is a seams you want to be matching up on the six side you want this across from here and these to be nesting here if they were beside each other so i'll stitch those together and then i'll be right back so these are the last sections to piece together so i have section seven six and five here and this is section one with two three and four we're going to be matching this seam this will uh, be at the last block here this will line up and then it carries down so i'll get this joined together i'll press it and then i'll put it up on the board for you to have one last look here it is all pieced together. I like to call this a zigzag or wavy quilt. It will measure approximately 45 by 45 without any borders. If you'd like the pattern, please email me at sewwithdebi at gmail.com. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And I love to hear back from you. So have a great day of sewing. Take care. Sew with Debbie.